Hey everybody, this is Tyler Lay. We're here with Ann Ellis. She is an amazing person. I'm not gonna ruin it for you. She's got a lot to share with us. We're gonna jump right in. Ann, please tell us about yourself. Well, hi Tyler and hi to everybody in the audience. My name's Ann Ellis. I am an engineer uh, by background. I'm DC based, Washington DC in the United States of America. I'm a graduate of Virginia Tech, Go Hokies. I've had um, quite a different kind of uh, career for most engineers. I spent the first third of my career designing buildings. Um, many were concrete or predominantly reinforced concrete. I spent about another third of my career in the not-for-profit world, advancing the interest of the concrete and cement industry, which was a very interesting experience. And I spent about a third of my career um, and on the business side of engineering and construction, working for very large, publicly traded global companies, and I worked all over the world. Um, it's a little bit different background than a lot of engineers, but it's really been an amazing career. And I think that diverse experience is so exciting. I think, I think that makes you special. It makes you got a lot of really cool insights. And I'm looking forward into digging into that today. So now tell me about your experience in bringing innovation to the concrete industry. Now, I try to bring innovation, but I think you take it to a whole new level. Well, I don't know about that, but um, again, it's, it's authentic. Um, there are certain things about my personality. First of all, no is not in my vocabulary. Um, I'm totally not wed to doing things the way they've always been done. Um, and I'm very interested in how one thing affects another. Um, I'm, you know, I'm always looking up and around and, and what's new and, and um, willing to have conversations with people, you know, that are also involved in our industry, but, but maybe not doing exactly the same thing we're doing. The other thing is, um, I became very much aware that engineers are, are trained problem solvers, and problem solving is inherent. It's foundational to innovation. Um, and you see this very much so on the construction site. People are so innovative, and I found that very fascinating. So it was just a, a natural, authentic draw to the field of innovation. And, you know, I, I never said, I'm going to be an innovator or I want to work with the innovators. I just found myself repeatedly in that situation. That's really cool. So now, why do you think it's so important for us to keep innovating? And, and why don't we have more innovation? Because I, I, I totally agree with, with what you just said, like on the construction site, that I see it a, a lot. But why don't we see it more in our designs or in our products or things like that? It's a very uh, a complicated um, set of problems, a set of challenges to bring innovation forward. Um, first of all, why do I think it's so important is that uh, construction is one of the, the oldest industries on this planet. It's in, in this country and in many places around the world, it's a very mature industry. People see it as an old industry. And innovation makes an, a mature industry young again and exciting. And, and it brings with it new life and new opportunity. A lot of people will say it displaces people, it displaces supply chains. Yes, that's all true, but it creates new opportunity. So I think it's vitally important um, that if, if we are to advance society and solve some of the problems that we've created on this planet, we have to be uh, innovative. Why is it hard to bring innovation into a mature industry? Um, again, it's a complex problem. Um, one is construction is heavily regulated. We think of financial services being heavily regulated. We think of pharmaceuticals being heavily regulated. We don't think of construction that way, but it is. And it's, it's regulated as heavily as these other two industries. So first of all, trying to bring something new into a heavily regulated industry is a big challenge. It takes a long time. Um, and, and it's a complex path to market. Uh, that, that's a big part of it, but there's many other uh, problems. Um, construction is a fragmented industry, that, and what that means is that there's no one company that's going to do everything. If you think about buying a car, right, and um, you don't go and buy the pieces and put the car together yourself. 
Um, when you think about that, if every time you, you had to go buy a car, you had to go to the store and assemble all the pieces, and then that your car dies and it's time to buy a new car, and you go to the store and, 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 and you, wanna, you're, you think you're going to replicate or build on the knowledge you gained from building your last car, and you go and you find it's completely different. And, and in fact, the store is not even there anymore. You, sh you have to start over all, you know, once again. That's another challenge we have in the industry. Um, and we rely on so many different people to provide all the different pieces and know-how to build anything. Um, so that's the fragmentation of the industry. The other, another piece is that we're project-based. So it's almost like the movie Groundhog Day, right? Every time you start a new project, you're starting with a new team, you're starting with a new problem, a new site, a new design, you know, you're starting all over again. And so, yes, you can capitalize on the knowledge that you gained from previous projects, but it's the people part and the supply chain part um, and that, that, so, that complicates things. These are just three of many, many challenges that, um, that innovators face in our industry. No, I, I think that's, I think you're right on there. and, and um... And it sounds so daunting sometimes, but, but how do you bring, because you've brought change to our industry, you've brought innovation. How do you bring innovation to the construction industry? What are the steps? Well, um, you, you know, I'll, I'll talk, I'm gonna tell the story backwards, if you don't mind. It started uh, about 20 years ago when I was working with the concrete and the cement industry. And um, they had a portfolio of, of great ideas and great innovations, and they couldn't figure out how to get it out into the marketplace. And one was a product that, that many of you know is control low strength material or flowable fill. And it's an excavatable type of concrete that they use in utility work. And it's, it, it was a, it's a great solution, right? It helps us um, avoid potholes and, and, and such, you know, anything that you put on top of the um, of uh, the fill. So anyhow, um, they had this product, but they didn't know how to get it to market. And I said, let's put it in master spec, the, the, the document uh, or the tool that engineers use to write their project specs. People were like, well, how do you even do that? I don't know. <laughs> so I contacted the authors of Master Spec. I went and met with them. They told me what the process was. And, you know, it, it, it wasn't daunting at all. We pulled all the material together. We submitted it. It was evaluated and approved, and it found its way into Master Spec 20 years forward. You will see controlled low strength material in almost every project specification in the United States. So that's an example of helping to bring innovation to market. You can have the best product, but if you can't figure out how to push it out and get it into the user's hand and the, and the decision maker's hands, it's not going to be worth anything. Fast forward to today, um, I, I have the privilege of uh, helping a lot of teams um, when they first raise a great idea. And we, and we help them in a variety of ways. Um, one of the roles that I serve in in the industry is as executive director of the Charles Panko Foundation, which is a, a private research foundation that helps bring technologies, we call technologies uh, uh, forward, you know, from the red zone to the end zone. So about a year ago, a team came to us uh, that included Microsoft, believe it or not, with the idea of creating a tool that would allow not only designers, but people who were purchasing construction materials to evaluate the construction materials carbon footprint and decide whether or not they wanted to use, for instance, Joe's concrete or Sally's concrete based on not only, you know, the traditional uh, concrete performance requirements, but also include uh, embodied carbon. So they had an idea, they had a tool, they had a sense of what it was going to cost, they had a team that was willing to work on it. Fortunately, the Charles Panko Foundation, along with a couple of others, agreed to put in the seed money. Um, fast forward to today, just a year later, over 50 companies 
foundations, industries, organizations, trade associations, and technical societies have worked on the development of the tool, helped fund the tool, and it was rolled out at Greenbuild in November. Um, the pilot tool was rolled out. Open access to anybody in the industry to use. It's being used now by um, quite a few owners and design teams all across the United States. They realize it's a pilot, um, but they're so excited about the prospect of how this could change the industry, they're willing to participate. So they had a great idea, they had the right people engaged from the get-go. Microsoft said right up front, if you develop this tool, we will use it, we will pilot it on our campus renovation that's underway right now, and they have been. And, um, you know, it, it's really important to have a good idea, a path to market, and the right people pulled together. This is an industry that loves to collaborate. We're very good on collaborating. Um, it's not an industry that's real friendly to proprietary ideas. They like it if it's open source, open access, and it's, it, it's truly amazing how the industry, if you have the right dynamics, how they'll come together and, and work together to make a change. That's really cool. What's the name of that product? That product is called the Embodied Carbon and Construction Calculator. The principal investigator uh, is, leads the Carbon Leadership Forum. Her name is Kate Simonen. Uh, the Carbon Leadership Forum is associated with the University of Washington. Uh, there's a, a private developer, a, a technology developer that's also involved, Sea Change Labs. Uh, you can access the tool on buildingtransparency.org. Very cool. I'll make sure I'll link that and make sure everyone goes out and checks it out. That's such a cool idea. I'm excited. And it, it, uh, that's, that's really, that's super needed in our industry. And so that's, uh, that's cool that you guys were helping building that. That's totally awesome. Um, now, if, if you knew someone that was an innovator out there, what, what advice or resources would you try to give them to try to help them penetrate or get, in, get in, into the um, construction industry? Oh, oh, wow. Well, you know, I meet a lot of people with great ideas, great technical solutions, um, and, and a lot of passion and some, with some really good ideas uh, that the industry could use. Um, but often they don't understand business plans. They don't know how to develop a business plan. They don't understand how to, uh, how to talk to people that aren't part of a technical audience. So I think a really important uh, uh, skill set for any innovator is the business side. And if, you know, it's not everybody's cup of tea. If it's not your cup of tea, you need to find a partner that will uh, help be your business partner. Um, because otherwise, you're, it's very unlikely your innovation will ever be considered. No, I, I, um, I agree. And I, I would say even if you are business minded, I think it's a great idea to have a partner that's even more business minded than you. You know what I mean? Someone that can bring their skills and their different different perspectives, someone you can bounce ideas off of. I think dual partners are are, uh, on, um, are very, very important. And, and Absolutely. Helpful. Whoa, wasn't that great? I love Anne's passion. I love how she brings innovation to the construction industry. Now we're gonna be able to learn even more about Anne. Did you know that she was a former president of ACI? She's gonna have some awesome stories in the next video. Please make sure you give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and of course, leave me a comment below. Take care, everybody. Bye.